person, uh, Alex Bonkaban, who is with us, uh, Daria Tatan, Giovanni Colombo, also members of the board. Uh, it is uh, really a pleasure that you are here. I think we have a challenge. Uh, today is a bit rainy, but uh, the challenge is to make this room, in spite of its size, uh, a warm room. And I think we will manage that with your enthusiasm. It's all about youth and entrepreneurship, so it's really about you. It's about the future we have to build for Europe. And uh, there, there uh, we will be sharing also our energy, uh, our strategies, the vision of the chair. So I trust that again, uh, with your support and the contributions we will have in the conference, you will find it interesting. Uh, therefore, very much a warm welcome to this conference. Thank you, thank you for joining us. I would imagine there are going to be people registering along the morning. But again, uh, please uh, make this conference uh, interesting by networking, make yourself available, because we have came here uh, really for that purpose. Uh, uh, you know this is, uh, uh, this is an event in Poland, precisely because uh, uh, Poland has the presidency of the European Union. And then, uh, well, the city of Krakow, I think, is very opportune. We are talking about people, about uh, entrepreneurs, about Gauf, I think this is certainly the place. And to link our conference with the uh, presidency of the Council of the European Union, I'm very pleased to have a representative from the government, Mr. Christoph uh, Gulda, Director of the Strategy from the Ministry of Science and Higher Education, that would address some words to see what does this conference mean in that context of the Polish presidency. So, Mr. Gulda, please. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, young colleagues, students, PhD students, young researchers. You are in the heart of EIT, in my understanding. And I'm very proud, it is a great honor for me to be here on behalf of the Polish Minister of Science and Higher Education, Professor Barbara Kudrycka. Uh, as we all know, the European Institute of Innovation and Technology is one of the liberal strategy instruments to support the strategic goal to become the most competitive and dynamic knowledge-based economy in the world. Its aim is to develop innovative capacity of EU and its member states and to create synergies between innovation communities in Europe. The main added value of EIT is the seamless integration of higher education, entrepreneurship, research, and innovation. Thus, EIT should become the innovation machine or innovation engine to entrepreneurship, trust, and cooperation conducted to the development of innovative Europe. I would like to strongly stress that Poland, from the very beginning, has actively and creatively supported the idea of EIT since its inception in 2005. And me personally, I can say openly that I'm the big fun of the EIT as a concept and EIT as the new mechanism, the new institution in Europe. The idea itself evolved in our country a debate involving both regional and the central authorities, local researchers and innovative innovation communities. And this is also very important for us and I'm very proud that you decided to come just to Krakow because this is the city of science, city of culture, but it's also the city where is the one of the collocation center of one of our kids. So this is something which we are very happy with as a, as a government, as a, as a ministry. Referring to the theme of the conference, there is no need to convince anyone that innovation is the smart combination of invention and creativity that leads to the generation of social and economic value. It is a key driver for economic growth, global competitiveness, and the integration of countries into the global knowledge-based economy. Innovative and entrepreneurial people are essential for the creation of social well-being. Fostering a culture of entrepreneurship within the youth, means you, and the society as a whole will develop their capacities and create job opportunities, thus helping to elevate unemployment and boost the country's economies. Entrepreneurship is not only it's not just about creating business plans and starting startups, new ventures. It is also about the creativity, innovation, and growth. A way of thinking and acting relevant to all parts of economy and society 
as well as a, as well as a whole surrounding ecosystem. Equipping with the right entrepreneurial skills is a vital to creation of thriving and innovative society. Entrepreneurship education is a crucial role to play. Universities and research institutes must prepare students to work in a dynamic, rapidly changing entrepreneurial and global environment. It can be understood as a lifelong process which develops individual skills, attitudes, and behaviors. It is important to start as early as possible at all levels of formal and informal education. We cannot forget about developing entrepreneurial drive among students, raising awareness and motivation, developing entrepreneurial ability to identify and explore opportunities. Effective education programs and, acti and activities for entrepreneurship need to be delivered. It's time to more adequately develop entrepreneurial skills, attitudes, and behavior in our school, school and university system. And it's, I think, important to underline that just now, here in Poland, we are deeply changing our higher education system, research system. Just a year ago, in the beginning of October 2010, six new legal acts were implemented. And just a few weeks ago, by October 1st, two more were taken in force. So in fact, the whole environment for research activity and for higher education activity in Poland was dramatically changed. One of the pillars of this change was built around students and around academic entrepreneurship. So I can assure you that the situation and the new model which is developing now in Poland is very much focused on entrepreneurial activity on behavioral skills, on everything which is related to mobility of students, mobility of young researchers, development of new companies and commercialization, commercialization of knowledge and all possible meanings. So I think you have chosen the perfect time, the perfect place, and on behalf of Minister Barbara Kudrycka, welcome you in Poland, welcome you in Krakow, and have a great time here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Gulta. This is uh, this sounds very encouraging. Again, there are big expectations about the conference, and we are indeed very happy to be uh, here and contributing to these uh, uh, much-needed reflections. Yes, innovation and entrepreneurship is state of mind, but it's also an act of willingness. You have to want this to happen. Fortunately, we are not alone in this uh, uh, venture to make Europe a, 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 count, a continent of entrepreneurs. And uh, so you would see now a number of video messages we have registered. There are big expectations about EAT. Uh, there are big expectations about your role in future. And uh, we, f we should feel proud and encouraged by this. So let me uh, introduce these messages. First of all, we would have a video, a message by the commissioner, Androa Basilo. Uh, she is in charge of the uh, uh, education and culture in the commission. We would have also a video address by Herbert Royal, who is the uh, chairman of the ITRE committee, the link with industry. And we have also a message by Doris Pack, that is the chair lady for the committee uh, of the culture in the parliament. So you see institutions are uh, looking at us, and uh, again, we should be encouraged by this. So I would uh, rather invite maybe organizers to uh, take all these six videos together, and I would join you later to introduce uh, our chairman. Minister Kutritska, Chairman for Gaben, ladies and gentlemen. Unfortunately, I cannot be with you today in the beautiful city of Krakow for the conference organized by the EIT on youth and entrepreneurship. But through no, this message, allow me to share with you my vision on a topic which is very close to my heart and my political priorities. Europe is going through difficult economic times. However, if we are to exit from this crisis, we need to invest in our people, and especially in our young people. We need to invest in their education, in their skills, and above all, in their capacity to innovate. Education means empowering people, empowering by equipping them with the knowledge and skills they need in a rapidly changing and ever more challenging world. Europe's future growth and prosperity can only be based 
or talented people ready to be created. I believe we need to promote a real change of mindset in the way we approach innovation in Europe. Our young people should not be afraid to take risk, to be entrepreneurial. We must make them understand that failure is not to be feared, but used to progress. We must create the right structures to help them transform an idea into concrete reality. We should accompany them in the process of business creation and advise them on how to scale up their ambitions. In brief, we need to help our young Europeans to become innovators. And with the EIT, I believe we are doing just that. Through structured partnerships, the knowledge and innovation communities, or KICS, as we are used in calling them, we bring together the three actors of innovation, universities, research centers, and businesses. Specific master and PhD programs are being designed in each kick with solid entrepreneurial elements based on a strong partnership between the universities and the businesses. The kicks have also set the right conditions and the right incubation process for innovation to spurge and for new companies to be created. After less than a year of activity, we see already the first spin-off to be created and I know many others are on their way. This is truly encouraging. The EIT has the potential to bring a real step change in the innovation landscape of Europe. As you know, we are currently preparing the future of the EIT through the design of a strategic innovation agenda. You can count on my full commitment to ensure EIT's development. But if we are to succeed in our mission, I believe we need to attract and pull the rich young talent that exists in our universities, research centers, and businesses. We know that we need people with creative minds and an entrepreneurial attitude. In brief, we need you all. If you want to make a difference with your creativity, enthusiasm, and knowledge, there may be an opportunity for you with the EIT. So don't miss out on the EIT. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish you very fruitful and inspiring discussions. Dear Minister Kavitra, dear Chairman of the Government Board, Mr. Van Coburn, Dear entrepreneurs and students, ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to have the opportunity to address you via video today at the conference Youth and Entrepreneurship Drivers of Innovation of the European Institute of Innovation and Technology in Krakow. Regretfully, I cannot personally attend the conference due to my present obligations as Chairman of the Committee of Industry, Energy and Research in the European Parliament. However, I cordially thank you, the organizers, for setting up this excellent platform for exchange and dialogue on such an important strategic topic. Young people are the energy of the economy. They are usually open-minded, dynamic, and full of new ideas. They have the advantage of being grown up in a digital world, which means they know how to exploit the possibilities new technologies offer. In this regard, I very much welcome the initiative of the European Institute of Innovation and Technology of organizing a roundtable of top entrepreneurs in 2012, aiming at the inspiration of entrepreneurs to be and the reflections on new models of innovation. Visionary people were the record of excellence in the field of entrepreneurship and innovation. This is what it is needed to inspire the young generation and stimulate a more risk-talking culture in Europe. The IET Roundtable Initiative has my support to create a forum of mutual inspiration and dialogue between 15 of these role models and the different public and private stakeholders in Europe. 
I will follow this initiative with great interest. However, in order to be able to translate innovative ideas and research into marketable products, people need the right environment. Current efforts in the EU are pointing in the right direction. Policymakers are working towards the creation of a stimulating and creative environment that encourages people to invent and deliver bright ideas and to turn them into powerful commercial solutions. Europe is devising a comprehensive innovation policy that goes behind research and includes appropriate infrastructure. It can be said that drivers of innovation particularly derive from three fields. Therefore, first of all, Europe must encourage entrepreneurial culture. This implies positive attitude and risk-taking amounts young people. In order to accomplish this important goal, especially in this period when the crisis reduces confidence in the future, the EU should start promoting a new philosophy already from early on in school. Students should understand from the very start that education, research and industry are closely linked together. They're not far away boxes, but wagons of the same train that together will make the train speeding up. The European Institute of Innovation and Technology already represents a great example of these efforts undertaken by Europe in this direction. Nonetheless, more must be done in this area, both at European and at the national level. Member states must further invest in order to create a better connection between these different sectors. And secondly, if we want to develop all of Europe's innovative potential to help the economy to grow again and to leave the crisis behind, concrete actions must be taken. To give you some examples, there is the creation of a unitary European patent. This measure would reduce not only the financial burden for companies, but also significantly simplify the procedure of the overall time for patent granting in Europe. There are further the rules on bankruptcy, often cited by entrepreneurs, which need to be changed. The balance between the interest of unsuccessful companies to be able to fail fast and to regrow even faster, and the ones of the other stakeholders involved still has to be found. All over Europe, the bankruptcy